The China Tang restaurant here at the Dorchester Hotel in London is home to some of the finest, authentic Cantonese food to be found outside China. China Tang bears the unmistakable fingerprint of the flamboyant creator, Sir David Tang. The theme of the restaurant is olden day Shanghai, but the bar here is based on a 1930s imagination of Sir David's living room, where if you want to, you can also experience a Cantonese afternoon tea. In here, the dining room is served classical Cantonese dishes using the freshest ingredients to showcase centuries of perfected recipes, from the dim sum menus <laughs> to favorites such as Mapo Tofu, Yu Xiang Aubergine, and my favorite succulent char siu pork, including the ultimate centerpiece though, Peking duck. This place is a genuine celebration of Cantonese cooking. And I'm going to meet the man in charge, John Mann. What do you eat or what do you serve during Chinese New Year? We don't have a New Year's menu, but we will have New Year's specials, which will include the auspicious dishes, um, sea moss, uh, dried oysters. Again, you know, is a homophone. Dried oyster in Chinese, fat uh, whole si means good times. Sea moss is fat choy. That means it's a homophone for getting rich. We Chinese are, are you know, we're, we're, we're obsessed about f good fortune. So you've got to have fish. Why fish? The word fish in Chinese, yu, also means abundance. So, you know, when you have a fish dish, we always preface it with a little couplet, you know, nin nin yao yu, that means every year we'll have abundance. So if you eat the fish, you're going to have abundance in the year ahead. And what are the most popular dishes with your customers? Favourites, we have Peking duck, which is not a Cantonese dish, but, you know, we do it very well. A lot of people from Hong Kong have exclaimed, you know, this is actually better than, I wouldn't say Beijing, but better than Hong Kong. Um, we use uh, ducks from Ireland. And the interesting thing is the, the company, I won't name because, you know, actually export to China now. So, you know, because of the, the fat to meat ratio is perfect for Peking duck, for instance. Yeah, so they, they've got a very big market in China. Are your recipes, uh, your menus uh, adapted for a Western palate? I would say no, no. Our chef's um, pedigree is from Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong has always been quite an international place. Um, and it, with a huge choice. Absolutely, absolutely. Well. You know, f for instance, seafood in, in Hong Kong is usually flapping and alive when you, when we <laughs> be before you know, it's cooked. But here, you know, we use sea bass, we use turbot, and we use brill. Um, you know, it, it works. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry we couldn't make you any now. Grill and turbot are, are lovely. Absolutely, dishes. but oh. the techniques of cooking, i.e. steaming, the pan frying, and the, the flavours involved will make it quintessentially Chinese. Chinese food uh, is very personal, you were saying. Your, your chef chooses how much he, how much flavouring he will put in, how many herbs, how many spices, how much salt, etc. So you were really very dependent on the quality of a good chef. Yeah, it's not like baking where you'd, you'd, you'd measure to the nearest milliliter or, or, or gram, but it is more or less there. You know, the chefs are very skilled at using the wok ladle to, to dose out the seeding, the salt, the soy sauce, the sesame oil, etc. People these days are increasingly conscious of healthy eating. Absolutely. Have you had to change your menus to deal with that? I've always been of opinion Chinese food is, is tr intrinsically healthy because for instance you know traditionally for instance um, uh, 200 grams of beef in a Western restaurant would, would serve one diner but the, in, a, in a Chinese dinner setting they would serve four or five because meats almost treated as a condiment because of necessity you know China's had scarcity in the past for instance you know a typical stir-fry dish would be maybe 40 percent vegetables Veganism is increasingly popular too. In Asia, we've always had a long tradition of, of vegetarianism. You know, if you're a Buddhist, you know, um, some people abstain from meat and fish. So, you know, we do have a, a big variety of, of uh, meat substitute dishes. The Chinese always liked, even if you're a vegetarian in, in, in the Far East, you want to eat something which resembles a duck, mm. resembles a fish. Mm -hmm. So we've found there's a little bit of clash of culture here because a lot of vegetarians here, if it resembles a fish, it's, oh, it's offensive. Why is that? 
I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's very honest. Yeah, we, we, we had a, for one new year, we had a, something called a taro cake made with yam, minced yam, and it was shaped in the mold of a fish. And some, some clients kind of said, oh, no, I don't like that. It looks too much like the real thing. Yeah, interesting. interesting. Mm. John, that was great. Lovely Thank talking you. to you. Lovely. Have a great new year. Thank you. Gong hi fa choi. Gong hi fa choi.